Hi everyone. Ironically, this week it seemed that it was handed to him, but he still turned out okay. You see, usually we assume that when we are getting something handed to us on a silver platter, that means that we receive what that which we receive is indeed unearned. Yet that very symbol of handedness is precisely the image that we use in the transference of power and leadership used in this week's parsha to describe Yahushua's appointment. Indeed, the Torah tells us that Hashem told Moshe, Kach lecha es Yahushua ben Nun, Isha sheruach bo. Take Yahushua, who had the spirit in him, v'samachta es yadcha alav, and place your hand on Yahushua. Now, why does the Torah identify Yahushua as the one with ruach, with spirit? And if he already had the spirit, why did Moshe need to put his hand on him? And what was the purpose to hand something to someone who already had it? But what's more troubling is what happens immediately thereafter. Indeed, the Torah tells us that when it came to follow up on that, the Torah tells us, Moshe. Moshe did as Hashem asked him, laying his hands on Yoshua's head as commanded. Now forgive me for pointing this out, that Moshe did not do as commanded, and the Pasuk, at least on the surface, seems to be stating a falsehood. Moshe was told, V'samachta es yadcha. Moshe was told to use his hand, and instead the Torah tells us he used his hands, yadav. Why does the Torah go out of its way to tell us that he did as commanded, when in fact he did not? And further, how dare could Moshe deviate from the command of Hashem? And what kind of leadership does that show for a Jewish leader? So again, Moshe, Yoshua, hand over hand, and I wind up arriving, especially given today's weather, with one single mantra that I think answers it all. The answer, my friends, just happens to be blowing in the wind. The answer is blowing in the wind. How? How could the answer be blowing in the wind? You see, a Jewish leader needs to be an expert in Jewish law. There is no way a Jewish leader can lead if he does not have the proper feel for what the law demands. The process of transferring Torah law, we call Mesorah, or that which is handed, literally, from person to person and from generation to generation. It's impossible for a person to be a Torah law expert without having a Mesorah. You might be an expert at Googling, oh yes. You might be able to get a perspective, but without being handed a system for determining law, a Googler will not properly apply knowledge with the correct Bina to properly offer Psak to meet, meet justice and more importantly to lead. No, a good Torah leader is one who apprentices at the feet of a master, just like Yahushua did. In fact, Chazal tell us that Yoshua was selected as Moshe's replacement because he was the Mishares. He was the one who always assisted Moshe, and he never left his Rebbe. He was always on call, always ready to step up and get his hands dirty, to clean and to turn off the lights. Whatever Moshe Rabbeinu needed, Yoshua was ready to lend a hand. And in that regard, he had the Ruach, he had the wind and the spirit to intuit the Torah of his Rebbe, and was ready to teach and apply the teachings to the next generation. But knowing it all doesn't explain both hands. Because while being a cerebral expert on Jewish law is important on the one hand, there is another hand to Jewish leaders. And again, my friends, the answer is blowing in the wind. Rav Salavechik Zatzal in 1963 noted that Hashem told Moshe to command Yoshua in front of the people. But also v'nasata mehodcha alav to give the uh, to give Yoshua hod. What is the hod that he's supposed to give him? Rav explained that hod was the ruach. It was the spirit that accompanies mitzvah observance. After all, a Shabbos experience is not knowing all of the laws of Shabbos alone. Shabbos is an experience so filled with ruach, with a spiritual aspect that when the wealthiest of emperors wanted to buy the special spice of Shabbos, we learned in Dafyomi this week, it was not for sale. It can't be. The Mesorah of Shabbos is also in the stories. It's also in the food. It's also in the Zmiros. 
It's also in the Shabbos at, at, at table. It's in the experience. If you get it, then you get what David HaMelech declares. Tamu uru kitov Hashem. You can taste the Shabbos and recognize Hashem's greatness in the process. And the same can be said of Yom Tov. It's not the laws alone, but the experience of the tunes of the Yamim no Rayim, the traditions of a Pesach, the cheesecake and learning of the Shavuos night, and the tears of the three weeks in Tisha B'Av. It can, it, it can be said not only of the words of a tefillah, but the entirety of a shul experience, the opening of an Aron Kodesh, the attempt to kiss a Torah. It's those things that also complete the Ruach of Yiddishkeit. It's not just the knowledge of the results of learning, but also the give and take in the process, the experience of the interplay of generations, and so, too, in many mitzvos, We can do the mitzvos and follow the law. But we can experience the mitzvos and enter a different realm of relationship with Hashem in the process. And Rabosai, we need both. Yoshua possessed both aspects. Yes, he was the student par excellence who got a hundred on all of the smicha tests that Moshe gave. And so hence, at Yoshua's Chag Asmicha in this week's Pasha, Moshe commanded him to lead in law. And he put his hand, the hand of law, on his head. But Moshe also realized that a leader needs to also create the experience. And thus he gave Yoshua a second hand to help him realize that the second generation would also need a leader, a leader who also got the spirit. And thus the giving of the home. Because the answer, my friends, is in the Ruach. It's in the spirit that a person possesses that makes him or her ready to lead a community, a family, or even just a personal self into the next generation of Torah commitment successfully. Moshe gave the double hand. He gave both hands. And Yoshua would be able to pull himself up and the people up with both aspects of Judaism. The Torah's Hamoach, the cerebral Torah on the one hand, and the Torah's halev, the heart that commits on the other. Rabbi Lam Zatzal used to tell us that a person needs to have both. He needs to have a Torah's hamoach, and he needs a Torah's halev. A Torah's hamoach, a cerebral Jewish experience without a heart, is a body without a soul. It's a corpse. But a spirit without a body is but a, is but a ghost. It's the combination of the two that can be found in the wind, the Ruach of Hashem, that exists inside each of us, that provides the capacity for the combination. The answer is in the possession of the wind. Who has Ish Asher Ruach Elokim Bo? This Shabbos, we are honored to celebrate the Bar Mitzvah of Yehoshua, a different Yehoshua. Yehoshua Shragafaivo, my friend, Shui Strong. Shui, already a Ben Bias for many years, I've loved watching you grow up thus far. You're a remarkable young man with many, many talents. On the one hand, you're a person who loves to and can take apart a Gemara or a Chumash year with the best of them. You can dissect a math problem and solve it while baking a cake at the same time, both of which thoroughly delicious and amazing. On the other hand, you possess a lot of spirit. You give your all to the process whether it be in your beautiful tefillah, you're rushing to do mitzvos or take on new challenges, and the way that you're there for your family and your friends, and yes, your hockey teammates, your spirit is no less significant to the incredibly talented young man you've become. And it's no surprise that you've developed these gifts because you've been gifted two incredible teachers, our dear friends, Gary and Shira. Shira's inspiring style has inspired young women to reach beyond themselves to present the best versions of who they want to be. It's quite a tough feat. But when you realize that she does this in the generally cerebral dry world of math, you see just how far a person can go to combine a Torah Salev with a Torah Samoach. She has been bringing her passion and flavor-filled eye to our Purim and Perak programs making sure that every opportunity is elegant and memorable and grounded in Torah. Your dad, Gary's ability to always be available to lend a hand 
coupled with his incredible personal motivation, always pushing himself to be a better version of himself, constantly pushing on his knowledge, on his learning, on his exercise, his commitment to Torah projects, and justice, or even to you, to Adina, and to Eli, is thoroughly inspiring. Not only hopefully to you guys, but to the rest of our block and the community at large as well. Gary, Shira, we raise our hands in salute to you, and we thank you for the ruach that blows through the community that you have spent here, uplifting us all. Thank you for everything you do and are, and Mazel Tov. And I would be amiss if I didn't recognize the contributions of each of your grandparents, Dr. and Mrs. Strong and Mr. and Mrs. Zuckerman, who aren't just your grandparents, they too are all active here in our community. Their tall spirits are felt in our shiurim, in our tehillim groups, in our community at large, in our minyanim. I believe our community joins me in wishing them the bracha we offer all of our grandparents. Urevanim levanecha shalom al Yisrael. Complete and total peace. A sense of shlemus and nachas from your children, grandchildren, and many future generations at Biasko Al Tzedek, Mazel Tov. My friends, what we have experienced a year like no other were Jewish experiences, like a family Seder, a Shabbos davening, an interactive shir, and yes, even the rabbi's speech on a Shabbos morning have had to be re-examined and reconceptualized. At the same time, I remain uplifted by how our community has managed to roll with the punches and adapt in order to be inspired. At times, I'm mystified, totally mystified, as to how and where e you, each of you has found the ability to move to Zoom, to YouTube, and constant contact, to be in constant contact, not only with one another, but with Hashem in each of our religious milestones. But the answer, the one I hope will impart to our children now and in the future, is blowing in the wind. It's in the Ruach Hashem. The one that we'll hold on to as we sing on Friday night. Ruach HaPeinu, Mashiach Hashem. It's that grit, that strength, that spirit. May we be zochet to that spirit, uh, the one that will lead us to Mashiach Hashem as we travel onward and upward together. Shabbat Shalom to all.